Congenital heart defects are the most common type of major birth defect in the U.S., affecting about 25,000 babies each year. A subset of these infants are born with defects to their pulmonary valve, which is responsible for regulating the flow of blood into the lungs. These patients may require surgical placement of a conduit or tube to replace the pulmonary valve, and multiple open-heart surgeries are needed to replace the conduit over time. Now, a breakthrough new valve being used at the University of Michigan Congenital Heart Center can help these patients delay or avoid multiple surgeries, helping them to enjoy a better quality of life. I was born with tetralogy of flow, and that is a condition where you're born with a hole in your heart and the pig or the heart valve was faulty. It, it did not work pumping the blood. By the time Lisa was four years old, she had undergone three major open heart surgeries and looked ahead to more in her future, until her doctor told her that she might be a candidate for a groundbreaking new procedure. The Melody transcatheter pulmonary valve is the first FDA-approved transcatheter valve in the United States. It's really breakthrough innovation that allows us to implant a heart valve through a small catheter that's entered through the vein in the leg, advanced up into the heart, and deployed. The patients do not even need stitches. The incision is very small. They go home the next day and can go back to work or school in a few days. The purpose of the Melody transcatheter pulmonary valve is to delay the time until these patients need surgery. And hopefully that will decrease the number of open heart surgeries that these patients need over a lifetime. The University of Michigan Congenital Heart Center is one of the leading programs of its kind in the world. U of M was chosen as one of the first centers in the country to perform this new procedure. This is absolutely a huge breakthrough for these patients. Open heart surgery is a really big deal. There's a lot of pain and morbidity and time off of work and school that is involved. And patients want to do everything they possibly can to avoid that. Yesterday at 6 p.m. I think they began the valve replacement. It was a four or five hour procedure and I was to stay in ICU for 24 hours but it's like 12 hours later <laughs> or 18 and I'm up and getting ready to go. I feel great. A little hungry but... <laughs> <laughs>